Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Jonathan Mejias. I am in the EE. Uh, we have Sai Khan. He's also in the EE. And we have Rydon Samuro. He's our computer engineer. And today we're going to talk a little about our autonomous quadcopter. Uh, now, Sai is going to present to you why we chose this design. Okay, so the reason why we chose a quadcopter over, let's say, a plane or just a regular helicopter was uh, that we thought it was uh, mechanically simpler because since we're not uh, Emmys, we don't know. Um, how to build devices that could uh, vary the pitch of things so we wanted to keep it as simple and straight to the point as possible so we know enough about motors and speed controllers that we just have to vary the RPM rather than the pitch so that's why uh, one of the reasons why and um, another reason was that it's easier to build simply because it's symmetrical so we can build um, four of I guess everything four arms and uh, four pieces of everything so um, they're all kind of precise when they're related to each other. Uh, and so uh, we thought it would be a simpler control because all we have is uh, motors and the only thing we're controlling is the RPM of the motors. And basically um, as opposed to our regular helicopter which has uh, one main rotor, this has four main rotors and that, that's going to give us more lift. So we attempted this before in the summer and um, we kind it kind of worked it kind of didn't but um, it worked it worked enough for us to to actually um, uh, able to use the same frame and uh, the same kind of uh, uh, well the same parts I guess uh, so the the main problem with this approach was that we approached it as hobbyists and we just um, kind of got motors that were that looked like they would work and we kind of we didn't we didn't delve that, um, too much into the the spec sheets and uh, and all these things like that. So um, it was kind of like a guess and check um, <coughs> way that we approached it. And this uh, this is called a bottom up approach, and it didn't work that great. Um, so what we're going to attempt this uh, semester with the help of uh, Dr. Shankar is we're going to try a top down approach. And this approach is uh, we're actually going to approach this like engineers. And we're gonna get the spec sheets for the motors, the rotors, and uh, the accelerometers, and, and the microcontroller, the Arduino. And we're gonna, um, we're gonna, I guess, take all these values that they have there, and we're gonna make them relate somehow. <coughs> and after we we make them <coughs> relate, then we're gonna, we're gonna model them all into simulink, and then this will give us a virtual way of our helicopter, how it works. Um, let's see. So we have a few things to do, and one of the main things would be the, the control loop. So this is what we're working on uh, right now because we're gonna we have to model all this into simulink. So the control loop is the first and foremost because if we don't have the control loop, then the aircraft is gonna fall. Um, the second is uh, the DSP. What we ran to last semester, we realized that um, there's a lot of vibrations, and that throws off the readings of the accelerometer. So we need um, we need to, to, I guess, eliminate that uh, effect of the vibrations on accelerometer. How uh, how the Arduino would process that. So we'd have to take into account um, take into account the vibrations. So we have to build a filter to see if you can filter out, filter out as much of the vibrations. And um, we have to do the lift model because uh, last semester we kind of just assumed what would make it fly, but this semester we're actually gonna take the mechanical and aerodynamic models. And equations, and we're gonna see which one, uh, how much uh, weight we actually can use, and how much um, thrust our uh, motors will give us. And also, we uh, are gonna have to conserve space because with the DSP and the controls loop, um, these are probably gonna take up a lot of uh, 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 memory on the Arduino. So we might have to go down into a lower level language to accomplish these. So the accelerometer we did is just an off-the-counter accelerometer. Uh, we got it from Radio Shack, and it's uh, used in in uh, a lot of hobby things. And uh, for our project right now, where we just want the helicopter just to go up and be stable, just hover, I guess, and then come back down, this is good enough. When we're going into movements, then you would have to get a gyroscope also. But for what we have now, this is good enough. Um, so. Uh, it works basically um, as a level. So when it's flat, it reads. There's two outputs. There's a Y output and there's an X output. So 
and it's uh, flat, it gives us a 50% degree cycle on both of them. And then when we tilt it, it gives us, um, depending on which direction you tilt it in, it gives us like a 51 or uh, 49, you know, go with it. So uh, the next thing we have is the motor and speed control, and then John will talk to you about this stuff. So. All right, originally um, we had used brush motors, and we noticed that their efficiency wasn't so good. So now we decided to switch to brushless motors. Um, and these brushless motors that we're using, their maximum efficiency is about 96%. <clears throat> their weight is about the same with the other motors that we're using of 37 um, gram. And with the lotus, maximum lotus speed that they can go is about 55,300 revolutions per minute. <clears throat> also, originally with the brush motors, we had used um, some MOSFET um, amplifiers. Um, the problem with these amplifiers is that they will get way too hot. So we have to incorporate using um, some heat sinks and paste. Um, even even with that, they will still get extremely hot. So we decided now to use um, electronic speed controllers that will be attached now to the brushless motors. And these um, speed controllers, they now have a constant current of 30 amps, and they use an input voltage. Well, we're going to use an input voltage of about 12 volts. Um, right here, um, as you can see, we have the lift equations that we're going to use to model uh, the helicopter. Um, when that started from the top left, um, we have you know the equation right there is showing the lift, and that lift is giving in newtons. Um, and going down, you know we have the coefficient of um, lift, which is CL. Um, under that, we have sigma is equal to the width of the blades times the number of blades divided by pi r, and r being the radius of the blades. Um, <clears throat> the rest that we have, the rest of the things that we show are, are the lift force. Rho is the air density which we have. Um, the only thing that's going to vary is um, our, in our equation is the rotor RPM. Everything else is given. The S reference is the rotor reference area, and that's given by um, the units meter squared. Um, T is our thrust. Um, omega is the angular velocity, um, and then the sigma is the solidity. Um, as I was um, saying earlier um, about the modeling that we're going to be using in Simulink, um, some of the things that we have to deal with are the lift equations, which I just talked about. We have to find out how all the components relate together, meaning the accelerometer, the lift equations, the motors, and everything else in between as far as the DSP and, and everything else. And we have to bring them all to physical values. We also have to test all of these together and use different scenarios and make sure that our model works right. Um, now, Rydon is going to go ahead and talk to you a little more about his part of the project. Thank you.